moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till Jesus comes. I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart. She said, a man also a woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. He does, again, God does not change. He thinks the same way about that type of behavior. So how do you conjure in your mind or justify dealing in this type of behavior, honoring a day that is of an important day to witches, if you call yourself a Christian? You cannot do that. See, that has to be, there has to be a clear line drawn between what's acceptable and what is unacceptable. And Halloween observance is unacceptable if you call yourself a Christian, if you are a true follower of Christ, if you are a true Christian, if you truly are a servant of God. If not, then deal with Halloween, but know that you are not a Christian. Know that you are not a true servant of God. Know that you are a pagan. That's what you are. Because you are what you do. And if you do what the pagans did, you are a pagan. I don't care if you call yourself a Christian. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. It's just that simple, brothers and sisters. It is time to get away from foolishness. Especially, especially Israel as a nation. You have to turn back to your God. And how is it that we have accepted all of these false days, all of these false customs by our captives and have refused the true and living God? It's time to turn back to God. Deuteronomy 18 and 9. It says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. This is how we became eventually to Adopt the falsehood of our captives. Because we refused to cast those abominations away. We accepted them when we were in the land. The Lord told us again, he said, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do out the abominations of those nations. He said, cast those nations out. I'm casting them out and I'm giving the land to you. I'm casting them out because they're wicked. You don't be wicked. She said, you don't be wicked. But we were wicked. And he said, I'm going to cast you into slavery. I'm going to make the remembrance of you to cease from among men. This is why you don't even know who you are. But nevertheless, in verse 10, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. All this type of thing goes on on Halloween. How can you justify doing it? Verse 11, it says, Or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, okay? That means somebody that's called himself talking to the dead. You're not supposed to partake in that. Stop sending your kids to these Halloween parties. Stop dressing your kids up as witches and warlocks and anything in observance of a day that is for witches. Verse 12, he gives the warning, he says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. You are an abomination to the Lord when you do this. I could care less how you feel. This is very frank. But I am preaching this to you because you need to know what thus saith the Lord. It's just that simple. It's not sugar-coated whatsoever. You need to know that when you do this, it is an abomination in the eyes of God. And you are in error. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God shall draw them out from before thee. He says, thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Okay? So that's what he wanted. He said, for these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. So that's what he told Israel as a nation. But again, what was given to Israel is for everybody. Nobody should be dealing in this foolishness. Nobody should be dealing in this foolishness. You dressing as wishes. You you dealing in seances. You you do dealing with black magic and all these things. This is a day that's totally for that. Even you going to haunted houses. Now what's a haunted house? A haunted, I told you we would deal with the customs. A haunted house 
is a house that is haunted by us by a spirit of someone that is dead. Okay? And usually it would take place the according to legend or the or the custom is that you had a haunted house when somebody died in that house, usually when they died a horrible death, when they were murdered and they would stay around the place in which they were which they were haunted. Brothers and sisters, you are not dealing with somebody that died. People do deal with unclean spirits. But they can, just as you read in Samuel, with the witch of Endor, she appeared. That was not Samuel. Samuel is dead. What she was dealing with, she had a familiar spirit. And that's what people are dealing with. They can come and seem as somebody that has died. Those are unclean, familiar spirits. That's what that is. That is not a dead person. Okay? So, when you talk about you going to a haunted house and you see that wholesale, sending your children to these haunted houses, just know that there is no such thing as a haunted house, a house haunted by somebody that's dead. Let's prove that through the scripture. This is Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and the 19th verse. It says, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befall them as the one dies, so die the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. These are the words of Solomon. In other words, just like a dog dies, you die. You are have no preeminence above a beast in this instance. And why did death come into the world? Death came into the world for sin. The wage of sin is death. So when you sin against God, you got death coming. And he brought death in, into the world, in the Garden of Eden, to Adam and Eve, and to his seed after him. And we have been dying ever since. But that's not the only death that man has to fear. You have to fear that second death. You have to fear that second death. And that comes for sin. Again, the wage of sin is death. So if you don't get your act together, if you don't get your house in order, if you don't cast away all this foolishness, you're going to die, not just that first death, but that second death. In which there is no return. There is no redemption. Once you are in the lake of fire, there is no purgatory. That's some falsehood. Once you are in the lake of fire, that is it. So he said, you have no preeminence over a beast. Verse 20. All go into one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to the dust again. He said in Genesis, the third chapter, from dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. That's where you're going, brothers and sisters. Let's go and find out. In Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, what happens in the state of the dead? Again, a haunted house is a big thing that people deal with on Halloween, but you cannot have a house that is haunted by somebody that's in the dust. I'm going to prove this. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, and verse 3. He said, this is an evil among all that are done under the sun. This is an evil. Death is evil. Death is not a good thing. It came about because of sin. See, when you go to a funeral and some false minister lies and says that your mother is in heaven, he just lied to you. You go out there and what do you do? You put her in the ground. I told you I'm going to be real frank today because it's time to get away from foolishness. So you put her in the ground and what happens? She decays, she decomposes and she turns back to the dust from which she came from dust thou art and then the dust shalt thou return. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. So a man is crazy as a rogue lizard when he's alive, and then he dies and goes back to the dust. That is, madness is in the minds of human beings, brothers and sisters. You see that? With not just this falsehood we call Halloween, you see that with all the paganism that is dealt with. You see with all the turmoil that's in the world. You see that with all the oppression that is experienced. You see it all throughout the world. Man is mad. He says, for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. And we're going to find out why. It says, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. How can you haunt something? A house if you know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten. They have no memory. People get scared, oh man, he hated me and now he's going to haunt me. No, he cannot haunt you. He does not remember you. His memory is gone. He does, his knowledge of what he knew is gone. Also, their love, if they loved you, that love is forgotten. It says, and their hatred and their envy is now perished. So their love, their hatred.
gave to the enemy whatever they had in this on this side is gone. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. And he says something, he says, Go thy way, eat that bread with joy, and drink that wine with a merry heart, for God now accepted thy words. He says, So do what you're going to do in this life. He said, and he says something else. He gives you some very good advice, brothers and sisters. He said, Let thy garments be always white, and let thy hair like no other. So, in other words, have righteous works. Have righteous actions, brothers and sisters, and pagan observance. Pay, uh, observing pagan traditions and customs is not righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, brothers and sisters. Let thy garments be white. Don't put on some garments of a, uh, of a witch or some other costume and observance of this day. No, have you righteous actions as garments. Righteous works as garments. Let's go to Joel, the 14th chapter. Again, you're not getting haunted. See, all this is some foolishness in the eyes of God. And this, all this, these haunted houses, these customs, we're going to get to more of them. All of them come out of the vain imagination of God's mind. But if you want to, uh, out of man's mind. But if you want to know what's on God's mind, here it is. Open up your book and read. This is Job, the 14th chapter. In the first verse, it says, Man that is born of a woman is a full, few days and full of trouble. Few days. You might live 50, 60, 70, 80 years. That's nothing. That is nothing. That's few days. Just like grass grows and it is cut down, so is your life. And it is full of trouble. Think about all that you've had to experience in this life. Full of trouble. Even having to work. That was part of the curse that was placed on man. Had man did what he was supposed to do, he would not have to eat bread by the sweat of his brow. He says something about man. It's written in Job, the 14th chapter, and the second verse. It says, He cometh forth like a flower when it's cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. See, your days are short, brothers and sisters. Verse 10 says, But man dieth and wasteth the way. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? See, what is this ghost? Not talking about some ghost that's haunts you, brothers and sisters. Ghost is slang for spirit. Spirit is usually represent or is representing that which is not seen. God is a spirit. The angels are spirit. The word of God is spirit. And your breath, brothers and sisters, is spirit. That is spirit. You cannot see. You cannot see it. All you can see is the evidence of it. That is spirit. You do not have a soul that's inside of you. You are a soul. You are the soul. When the Lord for a man, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He did not put a soul in you. So there's no soul that departs from the body and then haunts some house. You are the soul. Verse 11, as the waters fell from the, dry, from the sea and the flood decayeth and dried up. So man lies down and rises no more till the heavens be no more. See, you don't rise right after you die. He said, you rise no more till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. They're not haunting you, brothers and sisters. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. This is what Job's whisper was, and Job is not in heaven. Even when you say the Lord's prayer, it says, Our Father which art, of, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You pray for the kingdom to come upon this earth. And Jesus himself said, No man that descended up to heaven be he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. He never said he was taking you to heaven. Job is still in the grave. And that's why he says, oh, thou, oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be past, and that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. There is no underwear that he is in. He is in the dust. 14, it says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. You hear this in churches, but do you really understand what it's saying? If you were talking about going to heaven, you really don't understand. It says, if a man dies, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time? Will I wait till my change come? What change? The change from a terrestrial body to the celestial body. To that which is earthly, to that which is heavenly. That's what he's going to do. In verse